the head, class 12, biology, the same lesson, the sexual reproduction in class. Today we are going to discuss about seed or seed. So what is seed is? Seed is the product of sexual reproduction. It is the product of sexual reproduction. Or we also said that fruits, oh sorry, seeds are fertilized ovules. Seeds are fertilized ovules. Ovules fertilized to form seeds. Where it is formed? It is formed inside the it is formed inside the fruit. Lots of the fruit we ate that is that contains the seed. Seeds are present inside the seed, uh, inside the fruit. So that is the seed. A typical seed is made up of or consists of three important parts. A typical seed is made up of three important parts. What is the important part? A typical seed is made up of made up of seed coat, the outermost, the covering, then cotyledon, cotyledon, is actually the stored foot which helps to germinate the seed, and third is an embryo axis. Embryo axis. So a typical seed is made up of these three parts. This is the seed cone, the high, hard protecting layer present outside the seed. That is the seed cone. Inside the seed cone, cotyledon is present. And inside the cotyledon, embryo axis is present. And what is cotyledon? Cotyledon, what is seed cone? It outermost tough cover. Seed cone is seed cone is outermost is outermost tough covering tough covering to protect the to protect the seed the seed okay. what about the cotyledon cotyledon may thick cotyledon may fill in due to the storage of food reserve the food is stored in the cotyledon. So what is cotyledon? Cotyledon may be thick. Cotyledon may be swollen. Because the food is stored in it. So what is the position of cotyledon? Cotyledon may be thick and swollen. Or it contains reserves Reserve food. This food is important for germination of the seed. The food is already present in the seed for germination, for promote the growth of the embryonal axis. Seed is divided in two parts. During the process of germination, if one seed is able to utilize its all food resource, then they are called the non albuminous seed. But if the seed, if the a stored food remain in the seed after the germination, then the seed is called albuminous seed. So we are able to classify the seed in two parts. One is called albuminous and second is called non-albuminous. It is depends on how the reserve food is present in the seed or not. If reserve food is present in the seed after the development of embryonal axis, then the seed is called albuminous seed. But if it is not present, then it is called the non-albuminous seed. So there are two types of seeds. Next is the type of seed. The two types of seeds are there. First is called non-albuminous seed. Non-albuminous seed. 
and what is the non albuminous state non albuminous state contain no residue in those form no residue endosperm endosperm remain in these seeds it means these seeds utilize all the reserve food present in it okay it is completely consume all the reserve food during embryonic development okay that is these seeds these seeds consume all the reserve food for embryonic embryonic development or embryonic development no food is remain so they are called the non albuminous seed example of this seed are pea for example pea sunflower sunflower etc they are the non albuminous seed groundnut all the oily seed are the non albuminous the second type of seed is the albuminous seed albuminous seed are the seed in which the part of endosperm remain there after the complete development of the embryo so what is embryo uh, albuminous seed albuminous seeds are the seeds in which part of endosperm remain after seed in which part of part of endosperm remain remain after complete complete embryonic development embryonic development so there are two type of the seed first is called the albuminous seed and second is called the non albuminous seed albuminous albuminous seed such as wheat for example wheat means barley etc all the grains that we eat as a cereal that is called the albuminous So more characteristics are present in the seed. Some seeds may contain remnant of mucilage. The mucilage is present after the formation of seed. Some mucilage is present. This type of seed is called periosperm. Periosperm. What is periosperm? Periosperm are the seeds in which or they may contain. remnant of mucilage what is mucilage at the time of the embryo no embryo embryo formation we see the some mucilage cells present around the while make us for mother cell so the mucilage cell is remain there in the formation of seed or embryonic axis development then that type of seed is called periosperm some seed some seed may contain may contain remnant of mucilage are called are called periosperm are called periosperm for example wheat maize barley castor etc for example wheat maize barley castor etc okay this are the various form now what about the seed seed contain seed coat seed coat is the outer most covering seed coat what is seed coat as i told you seed coat is outer most covering outer most covering okay 
outermost integument integument of ovary ovule integument of ovule and why this present this is an important question why this present because it is tough and protective in nature it is tough and protective in nature protective in nature so it is present to protect the embryonic axis which is present inside the seed it also contain micropyle micropyle when a small opening present in the seed that is the micropylar end of the embryo what is the role of this micropyle it is a small pore in the seed coat which allow the entry of oxygen and water during germination what is micropore it is a small pore present in present in seed coat and what is the role of this micropyle small opening of micropyle it allows the it allows the entry of oxygen and water inside the seed for germination for germination one important thing is the micropyle which is present here what happens when the seed get mature all the moisture of the seed remains lost and it become dry okay all the moisture go is evaporated out when the seed get mature what happens when seed get mature when seed get mature all the moisture all the moisture contain all the moisture contain get lost and it become it become dry and wait for the favorable condition for germination when the seed get the favorable condition they start the process that is called the germination but if the condition is not favorable the unfavorable condition is there then the seed become dormant the dormancy period is going on which protect the seed and wait for the favorable after seed next the fruit now what is the fruit is we know that ovule develops into seed and ovary de develops into ovary develop into fruit the outermost wall of the ovary is converted into the cover or the integument of the wall of the fruit and that is called the pericarp what is pericarp the outermost outer most wall of ovary the outer most wall of ovary which makes a coat outside the foot which covers the foot which covers the foot or sorry the foot is called is pericarp pericarp is there what happens the when the fertilization is over ovary start getting converted into seed ovary start getting converted into fruit and rest of the floral axis that is the stigma style pollen pollen tube all these that is the calyx corolla all these floral parts floral other floral sub parts are degenerated okay at the time of at the time of fruit formation fruit formation all the floral part get degenerated why they get degenerated 
wire they get degenerated it gets degenerated because there is no use of this the use or the uh, uh, importance of uh, the, this floral part is gets lost so it is not a usable part so it gets degenerated what is the nature of fruit there are two nature is there fruit may be may be fleshy or dry okay. sometimes the fruit which we consider actually is not the actual fruit on the basis of these we are able to classify the fruit into three types what is called fruit as we know that the ovary develops into ovary develops into fruit if the fruit develops only from the ovary then they are called the true fruit what is true fruit fruit if fruit are developed from ovary then they are called true fruit okay if fruits are not from the from the ovary then the fruit is called false fruit second is the false fruit what is the false fruit false fruit is actually the fruit in this thalamus also contribute in the formation of fruit thalamus also contribute in the fruit formation in false fruit in false fruit thalamus thalamus also contributed contributed in fruit formation fruit formation some of the samples present around you such as apple no very well Okay, something, something like this. Apple is there. Okay, what happened in the apple? If you cut the apple from its half portion, you get some seed arrangement like this. Okay, this is thalamus. Okay, what happened in the casio? This is the calcium, and this is the fruit. It is just the from the thalamus. So all these are called the false fruit. So there are basically two types of fruit. One is called the true fruit because it forms from the ovary only, and second is called the false fruit because it is formed from the thalamus of the flower. One more type of fruit is fruit is there, and that is called the parthenocarpic fruit. Parthenocarpic carpic fruit now what is parthenon carpic fruit these are the fruit having no seed why they have no seed because they are developed without the fertilization these seeds yeah, i am going to rub all this side down the third type of fruit is parthenon carpic fruit parthenon carpic fruit what is the peculiarity of these fruits these are seed less fruit seeds are not present in it why the seeds are not present in it because these fruits are developed without fertilization these fruit fruit are developed developed without fertilization if the fertilization is not there it will 
seed formation is not possible in that seed. So they are called the parthenocarpic fruit. For example, banana. Example is the banana. So these are the three types of fruits which are classified roughly in three broad classifications. For concluding the lesson, we have to discuss two important terms also. One is the apomixis and second is the poly embryo. First is the apomixis. Apomixis. Now what is apomixis? Apomixis is the process of production of food or fruit without seeds. Production of seeds without fertilization. This is the process. It is the process of production of production of seeds without without fertilization. The question is seed is actually the end product of process of sexual reproduction. But if sexual seeds are formed without the sexual fertilization, how it is possible? This term was first coined by Winkler. This term was first coined by Winkler. Okay, Winkler used this term for three. The process of formation of seeds without fertilization and that is called the apomixis. Especially, mainly this process is present in esterace and grasses. Okay, it is present. It is present mainly in grasses, all the type of grasses and estimation. And estimation. Okay. Estimation. Okay. This is first given by the Winkler. What happened in this process? Asexual reproduction actually mimic of sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is going on and seed is formed. But it mimics like the sexual reproduction. What happened actually in this process? In this process, in this process, asexual reproduction, reproduction mimics like sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction. Now, what is the importance of sexual reproduction? In sexual reproduction, two forces must be there. In sexual reproduction, two forces must be there. One is called meiosis, and second is called fertilization. Fertilization. Okay. What happened in meiosis? In meiosis, the diploid cell get converted into haploid cell. Saprophytic state is converted to form the gamophyte, gamophytic state. Diploid cell becomes haploid. Then two haploid cells combine together and that is called the fertilization. So for sexual reproduction, two important phenomena must be there. Method of seed production 
of seed production through Okay. Some of the important methods is there. One is called diplo spray. First is called diplo spray. Okay. What happens in diplo spray? In diplo spray, the mother, the mega spore mother cell, mega spore mother cell. That is the two n in nature. That is the diploid in nature. The mega spore mother cell, which is already diploid in nature, without meiosis, they form amniotic. What happens? The mega spore mother cell, which is already diploid, without meiosis, without meiosis, form. Embryo sex develops into embryo sex because meiosis is not present here, so the cell is already diploid. This is diploid. This is also diploid in nature. Then what happens? The two processes going on. We know that in embryo, the various type of cells are present. Okay, what are the various types of the cells present in embryo? First is called egg cell. First is called egg cell. That is singular in number. And what about the rest? The rest of the cells are there. These cells are called synergic, antipodal cells, and polar cells. Okay. What are these cells are called? These are called antipodal, antipodal. Polar nucleus, polar nucleus, and synergic. Okay, we are able to divide the embryo in two parts. One is the egg cell, and one is the rest of the cell. So, what happens? As we know that for sexual reproduction, meiosis and fertilization must be there. But what happens here? Here in diplospheric, the mega spore mother cell, which is Two n in nature, diploid in nature, without meiosis, develop the embryo sex. Because meiosis is the first place here, so it already is a diploid cell, and this diploid cell, which contains two zone of the cell, one is called the egg cell, and second one is called the other cell, which is present in the embryo. What happens in diplospheric? In diplospheric, make a four mother cell, which is already diploid in nature. Without meiosis, form the embryo sac. That is the two n in nature. Embryo sac, which contains this two part of the cell, in this embryo sac, without fertilization. Here, no fertilization takes place. Without fertilization, without fertilization, what happens? The egg cell is fertile. For parthogenesis, it proceeded to form the pro to for the process is called parthenogenesis. Partheno. It's coming from parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis. What happens to the rest of the part which is present, other cell which is present in the embryo, the antipodal, the synergic, and the polar nucleus? They also get converted into the seeds. But the process, the seeds, the seeds are called apogonesis. They form the seeds by the process of apogonesis. Process of apogamity. So this is the first type of apomixis. The second type of apomixis is called apospore. Second is apospore. Okay. What happened in apospore? Here, the in place of the mega spore mother cell, the mucilus. Mucilus 
mucilage which is again to an is in nature that is the diploid what happened in the mucilage mucilage get converted into embryo sac embryo sac without meiosis without meiosis so the nature of cell is not change here this becomes to an only then again we know that in embryo sac the two zone of the cells are there egg cell one other cell that is the synergic antipodal and the polar nucleus here the process without fertilization no fertilization is going on without fertilization what happens they get converted into seed without fertilization they get converted into seed the egg cell remain converted into parthenogenesis and what happens with the nucleus of the cell they form the apogamy so this is called the apomixis so why the apomixis is important it is very much important process why it is important that is a important question why it is important because it may uh, provide large number of seed large number of advanced seed for the future generation we must discuss discuss about the importance of apomixis but after poly embryo poly embryo poly embryo embryo is a no variable what is the meaning of embryo poly means more than one in number okay if seed contain more than one embryo in seed seed contain more than one one then this, these are called poly embryo more than one embryo in seed okay so it is poly embryo when seed the best example of poly embryo is citrus fruit okay contain when seed contain more than more than one embryo in seed then it is called poly embryo okay poly is more than one and it is uh, if more than one seed is present in any embryo then it is called a poly embryo this was first discovered in the year 1790 it was first discovered in the year 1719 by anton von leeuwenhoek it was discovered by anton von leeuwenhoek in 1719 This process was first explained by this scientist. Okay, and he discovered this process in citrus fruit. He discovered. He discovered this process in this process in citrus fruit. What are citrus? So all the fruits of lemon group is called the citrus fruit. So Anton von Leeuwenhoek in 1719 discovered this process in the citrus fruit. Why this poly embryo is formed in any seed? Why this condition arises? What is the reason for poly embryo? Reason for poly embryo. or poly embryonic condition what are the reason for this poly embryonic condition the first reason is the formation of embryo from cells of embryo other than egg cell what is the common process common process is there the egg cell fertilizes with the male nucleus and that egg cell develops into embryo but few more cells are present in the embryo one is called the synergic the two cell of the synergic are there two polar nucleus is there and also antipodal cell is there the formation of embryo from cell of embryo sac other than egg cell then the poly embryo arises what is the first reason 
the formation of formation of actually egg cell uh, fuses with the main nucleus to form the seed but what happened here with the egg cell all the other part of the cell rest of the part of the cell they also participate in the process of formation of embryo the so formation of embryo from the cell present in ovule other than egg cell other than egg cell okay what are the other cells the cells which are present we very well know that the three type of cells are there first is called antipodal cell second is called polar nucleus polar nucleus and third is called synergid when all this cell is going to form the embryo the condition is polyembryonic and what is the second reason second reason is the activation of some sporophytic cell in ovule sporophytic cell is there the sporophytic cell is the megaspore mother cell that is the material of sporophytic tissue which is present in the nucleus so what happens that this cells get activate to form more than one embryo in the ovule so what is the second reason second reason is the activation of some sporophytic cell of the ovule activation of activation of some sporophytic cell in the ovule and where this sporophytic cells are present these are the maternal sporophytic tissue this is a part of megaspore mother cell okay what is this the sporophytic cell of the nucleus that is maternal sporophytic cell sporophytic tissue more than one cell is there or nucleus where is the nucleus nucleus is the place where the megaspore mother cell is there a large number of cells are there and one cell is developed as a megaspore mother cell and that is lead to formation of one seed but rest of the cell which is present around the megaspore mother cell they also have the characteristic of sporophytic cell so they develop into the more than one embryo and that condition is called the polyembryonic condition or it is called the polyembryo it is present in the citrus it is present in the mango it is a adventitive embryo actually it is a advanced type of the embryo so this is the polyembryo the next is the one apomixis is very much important now or the next is the what are the significance or importance of apomixis nowadays it is very much important process when the food demand is more when the population is more this is very much important process why it is important the seed which is formed by the process of apomixis they maintain their parental structure the seed maintain their parental character what about the goodness present in the parent generation that remain show in this next generation so they remain maintain their parental character that is the first important thing second the hybrid seed collected with hybrid plant do not do not maintain its characteristic due to segregation what happens when the hybrid seed is formed they are unable to maintain their character because the segregation is going on because of the segregation they lost their uh, improved variety improved character which is provided through the hybridization process so this hybrid seed is the 
remain uh, form year after year again again and again what happened in the hybrid seed if we collect the seed from any hybrid uh, plant then what happened that hybrid hybrid plants lost their parental uh, their improved character what happened in the hybrid plant we improved the characters of the seed okay improved the characters of the plant if we improve the character of the plant they are called the hybrid plant what happened the hybrid plant when we collect the seed from the hybrid plant that seed do not re retain their property why they do not retain their property because of the segregation but what happened in the process of seeds which are formed by the process of apomixis they retain their parental character so they are more usable for the next generation actually what happened with the hybrid seed hybrid seed which are collected which are collected from hybrid plant from hybrid plant they lost their plant they lost their they lost their variety or their parent their developed character developed character due to segregation due to segregation and it is not used for the next generation so it is useless for the next generation if it is useless for the next generation it remain produced again and again what happened due to segregation so they are again produced produced for next season if they are produced again again and again what happens it become more because of reproduction because of re production of seed it become costly it become costly okay this is the condition with the hybrid seed but what happens with the apomixis seed as we know that seed the plant seed which are collected which are collected from apomixis process apomixis process retain their maternal character are useful for next for next season or next to next season and all so because of these it is cheaper in cost so it is cheaper in cost so that is the advantage of apomixis seed over the hybrid seed okay this is the advantage of advantage of apomixis over hybridization Hybridization. Now I am going to conclude the lesson with these two topics. That is the significance, signification of seed germination and seed growth. Three points are there that we have to know: the reproductive, the production process or the productive process, such as the pollination or fertilization, are independent of water. In the process of the fertilization and pollination, water is not needed. It is there is no use of water for this process. But seed formation is more dependable on water. But seed is dependable of on water formation. Seed formation is more dependable on water. For the germination of seed, water must be there. Without water, the seed germination is not possible. Second. Seeds easily dispose in new habitat and help the species to colonize in other area. There are various dispersing method of the seed. 
we know that how the seeds are dispersed from one area to another area when a seed reaches another area a new area it must develop one habitat there also and their colony also a third they have sufficient food reserve for development of one young seedling as they are capable of photosynthesis by their own they have the reserve food as we know that in an in a seed the various uh, food reserve food is the form of the cotyledon is present there that cotyledon is a reserve food that helps the seed for germination they provide the seed for the development of the embryo embryonic axis as well as they perform their own photosynthesis the hard seed food provide protection to the young embryo why the seed survive a lot because of the hard seed food the hard seed food protect the young embryo the embryonal axis inside the seed seeds are product of sexual reproduction as they generate new genetic combination leading to variation why the seeds are important because seeds are the product of the genetic uh, the sexual reproduction so they are able to transform the genetic character they modify the genetic character and they generate the variation in different different type of variation because of the genetic combination seeds are the basic of our agriculture as we know that without seed there is no agriculture is there for agriculture process we need the seed dehydration and dormancy of mature seeds are crucial for the storage of seeds which can be used as food throughout the year and also to raise crop in the next season two important factors are there one is the dehydration in the dry seed when all the water get lost in the seed that is condition is called the dehydration and dormancy dormancy what is dormancy it may wait for the favorable conditions to germinate that is called the dormancy because of this dryness dehydration and dormancy a mature seed store the food and remain kept and they are waiting for the favorable condition for germ for germination not only for few days for few months they must wait year after year so in a long term they are able to survive we have two example two best example of this that the seed throughout the year or also the in the long term they are reserve their food material and become the dormant or dehydrated one example is the lupin that is a lupinus arcticus that is a lupin it is a 10000 year old seed this seed is evacuated from the arctic tundra one more seed is there that is from the date palm sonoix dactylifera it is 2000 year old seed that is discovered at the king herod palace near the dead sea this two seeds must show that the reserve for present in the seed is uh, uh, remain transfer from generation after generation the uh, seed remain kept themselves in rehydration and dormancy for uh, for a long period of time this is a 10000 this is a 2000 this is a long period of the time the last topic of the lesson is the seed dormancy what is seed dormancy we know here the dormancy is there dehydration you know very well what is seed dormancy dormancy is actually condition when seed resists the process of germination seed do not allow itself for germination what is dormancy it is a state in which seeds are prevented from germinating even under environmental condition normally favorable for germination seeds retain their character they retain their dormant period they do not allow the embryonal axis to germinate that condition is called the seed germination okay in in your garden you are able to see that this is the season of the marigold lots of the marigold seeds are spreaded in our garden but that marigold seeds is not germinated generally in the in, in the season of the uh, summer they the seeds is dormant the, the seed dormant itself Uh, in the uh, soil only when we get the, when they get the favorable condition that is the rainy season then then they get the favorable condition they start germinating by their own so that is the character present in the seed that is a self dormancy the dormant themselves for germinating that for the seed dormancy the dormancy of the seed coat seed is covered with the seed coat it is important part protecting part if seed want to germinate they have to break their dormancy okay if seed coat is in the dormant dormancy state how we can put on the dormancy period how we can so we may start uh, we, we may allow the seed to germinate how promote the seed to germinate the various thing is there break by the microbial attack the seed coat may be break by the microbial attack some microbes must break the seed coat and the embryonal axis get the chance for germination passes through digestive tract of animal if animal ate that seed the seed travels in the digestive tract of the animal and the, the seed when it passes out in the form of the seed it gets germinate 
Third is the exposure of low and high temperatures. Temperature also highly affected the seed coat. They also break the dormancy of the seed coat. Soaking, soaking. If we um, put the seed in the water, they get swell up because they can. They get the water inside it. That process also break the seed coat dormancy in um, gram chana. You see very well. The after soaking, the upper layer of the the gram is removed out. That is actually the seed coat. Washing in alcohol. If the if the seed is washed in alcohol, then also the seed coat get uh, remain uh, ready for the germination of the embryo embryonal axis. Keep 15 minutes in concentrate extract of oil. If we keep the seed in 15 minutes in the concentrate extract of oil, then also the seed coat dormancy get removed. So these are these are two important topics related to the seed germination and seed dormancy. This all from the lesson. Sexual reproduction in plants.